Do you like to jam out in your car, but your speakers kind of sound like they're underwater? The Miata only has two little door speakers and no roof. I can't hear the music. So today we're gonna install a six set of JL Audio speakers and amp so I can finally start to hear the music. We'll talk about how to pick a set of speakers, how to match an amp to them, and then finally, of course, how to install them. We'll see if all the time, money, and effort it takes is worth it. I have a feeling it's gonna be. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. It's time to hear the music. Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. All my life I've been searching for the ultimate off-roader. That's why Omaze brought me out here to James's private island off the coast of Costa Rica. Rumor has it, they have the ultimate off-roader that you can win. What did I say? I told you we had a TRX. One of you has the chance to win this Ram 1500 TRX, taxes and shipping included, plus $20,000 cash. As a professional off-roadologist, this is the king of performance pickups. This Ram 1500 TRX has underbody protection, a reinforced frame, and 35 inch tires that let you roll over anything you want. And it's not just the outside that's impressive. Pop the hood and you get a 702 horsepower supercharged V8 that gets you from zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Best of all, every donation helps support Team Rubicon, a nonprofit organization that utilizes the skills and experiences of military veterans to help people prepare, respond, and recover from disasters. So for your chance to win this Ram 1500 TRX, go to omaze.com slash donut media. If you use promo code RAM150, you'll get 150 additional entries. That's omaze.com slash donut media. Good luck. All right, now before we go slamming new speakers in this thing all willy-nilly, let's get out the old decibello meter and see how loud the speaker system is now so we can see how much we've improved in terms of loudness at the end of this. For that, there's only one song that we're legally allowed to use. All right, so with my phone volume maxed out and the head unit volume at 25, we maxed out at 87.8 decibels. Now I'm gonna turn it up and do it again, uh, but I just wanna get this at kind of a medium volume and at max volume. So let's turn it up. Well, not only is that not very loud, it sounds terrible. Oh, that was awful. Honestly, even if these things don't get any louder, if they just sound better, that would be a win. But I think we're gonna be able to handle both. They're gonna sound a hell of a lot better and more clear with better bass reproduction, and they're gonna be way louder than that. So, <laughs> we can only go up from here. And we'll finally be making good use of our head unit. You may remember we put this fancy Pioneer head unit in this Miata a while back. But the fact is, head units don't put out that much power. They don't put out a bunch of power to your door speakers. So if you're just relying on your head unit to power your speakers, well, you're relying on a pretty weak muscle. That's where an amp comes in. And that should really take these speakers to the next level. It'll power them really nicely, really cleanly. It'll sound crisp. The sound overall is gonna sound a lot better than what this head unit can crank out. So, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a big benefit to the old Miata. So to fulfill my fantasy of actually hearing music in the Miata, here's what I got. I got JL Audio's entry-level set of speakers. These are their C1s in a six and a half inch, which is what you need for the Miata. And then I also got their four channel 400 watt amp that is gonna be a nice match with these speakers. And together, they should sound great. JL Audio is probably my favorite audio equipment company, so I'm really hoping they don't disappoint. Then of course, to tie it all together, we've got our amp wiring kit. This is an important part of any amp and speaker install. You need to be able to power your amp, give it a signal from your head unit, and then send the music signal to your speakers. So all together here, I'm in about $500, which you can do this for a lot cheaper, but I'm hoping this stuff is gonna sound really good. And honestly, being able to hear the music at all would just be great in the Miata. A stereo install is really easy and really pretty standard. It's the same no matter what amp you have, what speakers you have, or what wiring kit you have. So everything we do here today, you'll be able to use no matter what kind of amp you got or speakers, so on or so forth. Cause it's all pretty easy. 
Now, before we go actually taking anything out of the car, the first thing I want to do is decide where I'm going to mount my new amp. And then that'll kind of guide me through the whole installation process in terms of where I need to route wires and where things need to go. So it should make things go a little bit more smoothly as long as I kind of have that guiding light of where everything is going to go. Uh, now, space is kind of at a premium in the old Miata, so I think we're going to have to move to the trunk, which is pretty normal. Okay, so I think that I'm going to be able to mount this amp right here. That'll be nice, pretty well tucked out of the way, still leave me whatever trunk space I have. I think that'll be great. With the use of some rib nuts, I'll be able to put some threads in here and just screw this puppy right to that bulkhead. So this is where the amp's going to go. So now as I work from here on out, I'm going to be working all my wiring to this spot. The battery happens to be about a foot and a half from where I'm mounting my amp. So that makes things pretty easy. Now we're going to go pull out those old speakers. Okay, there's our old speaker, an Alpine Type E. And these are decent speakers, even if this one is a little bit beat up. But we're replacing them with something a little bit better. So these speaker wires run through the cabin and back to behind the head unit. But our speaker signal now is gonna be coming from the amp, not from the head unit. So we would have to intersect these wires behind the head unit and then wire them to the trunk, which would maybe save a little time, but then we're using this old crappy, potentially corroded wire that's been in here since 94. So we're gonna completely rewire the speaker wire, which does take a little bit of time, but is worth it. It's gonna give you the best results. So you do want to get an oxygen-free copper wiring kit, which is the best at transmitting signal without any loss. But you also want to make sure that it comes with speaker wire if you're going to need speaker wire. And you're usually going to need at least some speaker wire. Otherwise, we've got our remote power wire. This is going to go from the head unit to tell the amp to turn on when I turn the key on in the car. And these are our RCAs. And this is what's going to take the musical signal from the head unit and send it back to the amp. These will be wired together from the head unit back to the amp. This will go from the amp to the speakers. This will go from the battery to the amp. And there's our ground wire. That'll go from the amp to the chassis. So these are all the things that we're gonna need to do to get our new amp up and running. It's honestly pretty easy and it's pretty standard. This is what it takes to install any amp. And it's not that tricky. Uh, just maybe a little scary because wiring stuff is a little weird, but it's no big deal, I promise. So with that said, it's time to go chop up some speaker wire. Okay, so I'm basically just going to kind of roughly mock this up to the area where we know we're going to install our amp. And uh, I'll leave these a little bit longer than I need them, and I'll trim them to size once everything's in place. But you obviously don't want to go too short. You always got to kind of plan for the zigzags you might have to take when you're finally installing your wire. So we'll have to come up and in a little, and we'll go through our little door grommet, and then into the door. So this is a little bit longer than I'm going to need it, but I'm going to leave that length there and trim it later. So cool. Now I'm going to cut that speaker wire at the amp end and do the same thing for the other side. Okay, and really that's uh, about all the wire we got. So I'm not even gonna trim that for now. It's a couple feet too long, but that's just fine. So now I'm gonna pop this door panel off, get this speaker out and put the speaker wire into both doors to get ready for our new speakies. So now I just clip those wires and the ends are kind of exposed. Now they're just speaker wires, so it's really not that big of a deal, but it is good practice, you know, when you're doing any sort of wiring or clipping of wires, that you don't leave any copper exposed that can touch other wires or touch ground. Now sometimes it's kind of tricky to cover stuff like that up in a way that doesn't look terrible. And for that, I have one of my favorite things for wiring stuff. It's liquid electrical tape. I'm just gonna dab a little bit of this on the ends of the wires I cut just to seal them up just because it's good practice. Okay, now it's time for, I guess what's probably gonna be my least favorite part of this. It's really never that easy, and for such a silly thing, it can be frustrating. And that's just getting the speaker wire from the cabin and into the door. It means we gotta go through this little grommet guy, and the inside of it's pretty obstructed by the dash. I do not intend to take the dash out today. What I'm gonna try to do is jam a welding rod through this grommet from the inside of the door to the inside of the cabin, and then hook my speaker wire onto that welding rod and then pull it through into the door. Now that's our speaker wire through the grommet. Now we just gotta do that same dang thing over here. All right, so now we're basically ready for some new speakers. But before we go slamming them in, let's go look at them and talk about them. 
All right, so like I said, we've got this pair of JL Audio component speakers in a six and a half inch size to go in the Miata. But how did I land on these? And then how do you choose an amp to go with them? Well, the truth is when it comes to buying speakers, you can spend about as little money as you want and about as much money as you want and anything in between. There's cheap stuff, there's super expensive stuff, and there's stuff that falls somewhere in the middle. And these fall somewhere in the middle at 120 bucks a pair. Reviews are a great thing to check, obviously, to determine whether or not the speakers you're looking at actually do sound good. But for the most part, most aftermarket speaker companies are capable of making a speaker that sounds great. So a lot of it really comes down to personal preference and how much you wanna spend. But then the question is, once you've chosen a speaker that you like and can afford, well, how do you pick an amp to go with it? it seems kind of confusing and like there might be math involved. But it's actually usually not that tricky. In fact, all you gotta do is either check the description on the website you're looking at them on, or if you have access to the boxes, take a look at them. So let's look at this box right now and see if these speakers are matched to my amp. So specs here, we've got our continuous power handling at 50 watts and then the recommended amp power, which says 10 to 75 watts per channel RMS. So that's what we're looking for, an amp that can deliver 10 to 75 watts per channel RMS at four ohms. These speakers are four ohm speakers, so the resistance in your circuit will dictate uh, how much power is pulled from the amp. So you wanna make sure that your ohms match what you're actually playing with. Uh, so let's check our amp and see how it matches up. We've got our power ratings here. 400 watt, four channel, class D amplifier. It says 100 watts at four channels, but that's at two ohms. We're rocking at four ohms. At four ohms, it's 75 watts per channel. So you can see that's a perfect match to these speakers at the upper limit of their power handling capabilities, which means they're gonna be as loud as they're designed to be, and they should sound crispy clear. And I also think it's pretty obvious that you know, companies like JL build their amp to go with the speakers that they make. So there's no secret there. If you match your sets between the same company, the same manufacturer, there's usually gonna be a great option of things that'll play together nicely, like what we've got here with our speakers and amp. So now that we know we've got a good match, time to put them in. Okay, with our speaker wires uh, wired into the doors, now it's time to put some terminal ends on the ends of these wires. I've got these brass little johnnies right here. I'm gonna crimp a couple of the female spade connectors of different sizes to match the speaker onto my wire with a little heat shrink. And then it's time to put the speaker in for real. All right, both of our speakers are in the doors and fully wired up, ready for the door panels to go back on. Uh, but before I do that kind of stuff, we're gonna keep wiring. Now it's time to pull out the head unit. So at the back of the head unit, there's generally two things that you need to do. You need to install your RCA cables into one of these spots. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. And you need to wire your remote signal wire. Now that's the wire that takes 12 volts from your head unit when it turns on, when you turn the key on, takes 12 volts from here and shoots it back to the amp to tell it to turn on. Because the amp is always gonna have its big fat wires to the battery and to the chassis always powered up, but you don't want it always on you want it to turn on with the ignition. So that's what the remote wire does. Now, head unit harness stuff is pretty well standardized. Your remote wire is always gonna be a blue wire. Now, there might be a couple blue wires and you might be confused. So you can easily test with a multimeter switched to volts DC and you can check with the key off and then with the key on. With the key off, you want zero volts. With the key on, you want 12. So uh, we'll just do the second half there's my remote wire, I think. And we test it with the old voltmeter. So we've got a whopping 10.8 volts. Turn the key off and you'll see that it goes down to zero volts. So that's a quick and easy way to check for your remote wire. The only thing we have left to do is the RCAs up here. You've got your subwoofer out, you've got your rear speakers, your front speakers, some video stuff like a reverse camera. Uh, so obviously we're gonna go ahead and hook up to the front right and front left RCAs. I mean, it's as easy as that. So I'm gonna get the wires routed from the trunk up through here under the carpet and into the backside of the head unit area Oftentimes when you're doing a stereo install like this and you're running your RCAs, you're also gonna be running your main power wire from the engine bay back to the amp. 
And if you are doing that, it's a good idea to not run your RCAs with your big fat power wire or else the amount of power that the amp is pulling can interfere with the uh, audio signal in your RCAs and you can get some nasty sounding uh, signal. So always separate the RCAs and the power wire. But this little guy, this little remote wire, that's gonna be just fine. Okay, that's back in. Now it's time to mess around in the trunk a little bit. All right, so to make this a little bit easier, I'm just gonna transfer the pattern of these four mounting holes on the amp to this cardboard. And then I can do a much better job of holding the cardboard in place, or heck, I can even tape it in place to transfer the location of the holes. Okay, now we'll put that in place. That's way easier. All right, so to put some threads in the holes that we just marked, we're gonna drill out and install these rib nuts. And we've used this on this show before and we'll use them on this show again, cause they're great. I'm going with an M4 size in terms of the hardware that we'll ultimately be using. But for right now, I need to drill a hole that the body of this puppy just barely slips into. And then I can deform it in place and then it'll be locked there forever, giving me some threads to mount my amp with. All right, the amp is mounted and it doesn't look too bad if I do say so myself. So now we can go ahead and plug our RCAs and our remote wire into the amp. Uh, we can also plug our speaker wires into the amp. And then all we gotta do is get our big ground and our big power into the amp. And this thing should be making some music. I'm also gonna clean up what I got going on here. Uh, this has been a bit of a mess since forever and I don't like it. Uh, not to mention that the factory ground on the battery is just the tiniest little thing ever. You know, we're adding things that are gonna be pulling more power, that are gonna be taxing the whole electrical system more. So I wanna clean this up, add a, a fatter ground, and just make this a little bit more usable. Tin snips, good for more than just tin. Okay, so I'm about to crimp this big fat ring terminal onto our factory positive wires here so this can go onto our new battery terminal. Now, these are big bad things and they're hard to crimp unless you have hydraulic crimpers. I'll show you how nice of a crimp we get. Okay, that's loaded in real nice. Let's jam our wires in. <laughs> I knew I was gonna do that at some point. All right, so our ground is effectively beefed up. Uh, I beefed up the cable that goes from the battery to the chassis, and then I added another cable uh, that just goes from the chassis here to the chassis down here, where it's a little more solid. So our ground is sorted out. Now it's time to actually start wiring up the amp. I'm gonna wire power from the amp around here to where the junction will be, and then I'm gonna ground the amp to somewhere nice on the chassis. You know, with all these loose strands of copper, it can get frayed and bent and you end up, you know, with a stray wire potentially touching the ground terminal. What we can do to avoid that is use what's called a wire ferrule. And it just slips over the tip, bunches them all up into one, and it's just thin tin so you can crimp this into place. That makes uh, in and out a lot easier on the amp. You don't fray your cable and it looks good too. So ultimately I may trim a little bit more of that power wire off just to get my fitment a little bit better, but with any of this kind of stuff, leave it long until you know you're ready to trim. So I'll leave this a little long, might clean it up later. Also might not. Uh, so let's keep going. All right, so power and ground are plugged into the amp. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the remote wire and the speaker wires, and that'll complete all the stuff we need to do on this side of the amp. And with that, this amplifier should work. 
So on an amp, you're gonna have control over how much power it really uses. You can use too big of an amp on speakers that are too small. All you gotta do really is turn the amp way down. So with that said, we kind of have control over how loud our music is at different volumes with the use of an amp because I can turn it up and down. So the fact is our volume at 25 and at max is kind of up to me, ultimately limited by the power of the amp. Now let's play this thing at 25 and then at max volume and just see what kind of decibels we get. I'm sure we've improved some. Okay, so the first time around we had 87.8 decibels at 25 clicks of volume. Now we got 97 decibels. Heck, that's almost 10 decibels of increase. Not bad. Now let's see what it sounds like at full volume. And now keep in mind, the only boon here isn't just the decibels, it's also the clarity and how this sounds. If you remember the first time around at max volume, I couldn't really imagine anything that sounded worse. It sounded awful. So hopefully here at max volume, it will be louder and much clearer, much more crisp, much more listen to a bowl, you know? Let's find out. All right, we came up to 104.8 decibels and that's a pickup of about five decibels. I think we were just over 100 uh, the first time around. And things sound a lot better. Now, you may notice, and also you may not, it's kind of tough to tell this sort of thing through video and then through your speakers, but these speakers are still being tasked with uh, some low notes, especially in this bop of a song. There's some low notes that these speakers just aren't equipped to handle. They're not big enough. They're not woofers. This, these are not subwoofers. So, uh, to make these things sound even a little bit better, what I can do with the amp, one of the freedoms it gives you, is I can use what's called a high pass or a low pass filter. And in this case, I want to kind of block out some of those low frequencies that really can only be reproduced by an appropriate subwoofer. So by blocking out some of those lower frequencies, I can make sure that these speakers focus on the noises and the frequencies that they're capable of hitting, and then they'll sound as good as they possibly can. Which is another reason that doing a custom setup like this is worth it because you, you end up with a lot of control at your fingertips. You can crank the power up and down, you can add speakers, you can add a subwoofer if you maybe wanna reproduce those low frequencies. So I think that this is an absolutely worth it mod to do. It's not that hard, it's kind of fun, it's a really good way to get into electrical stuff in general. And at the end of it, you come out of it with some skills and you get to listen to music and it gets to sound good finally. And in my opinion, that's one of the most important things in life. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two watching this video. I hope you had a good time. Uh, I sure had a blast. And now I've got a Miata that makes some actual music. So if you did have a good time and learned some stuff, like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at Zach Job, follow Donut at Donut Media, and I'll see you cool cats next Wednesday. For now, I got a Miata to put back together.